Hey, cheese pop. Oh, you guys can't see, but cast there. Welcome again to another show of the uh, hobo and his girlfriend. There goes my cat. Um, I do apologize right now if I'm not feeling like the happiest person that I kind of normally try to be because again, I want to do a celebration of pro wrestling and it's hard to be down, especially when you see clips of. You know, Cyrus Pearl having a dance off, even in, in, in bad times, that still makes me smile. Um, Delirious and his antics with Sami Zayn, Player Uno, and what was another funny one? AJ Styles first top rope, the most illegal move in all of wrestling, hypnotism, done in the Osiris Portal. Um, that was kind of a tragedy. Tragedy. I can't even say that word. So if I'm not as chipper as I normally am, I and seem semi quasi distracted. I do apologize for that. I'll probably set up a little memorial, maybe in memoria thing. I forgot. So I finally for a first permission, if I can say, you know, can I just do a little thing for my YouTube channel? If, if they say no, I, I fully understand. If they say yes, I'll make something kind of tasteful. So, um, I think there's going to be some, well, not really major changes this week, because it's just early. So today, so this week's schedule, and I'll, oh, shoot, I still have to have that calendar. I just realized that. I'm, I'm so far behind. The whole weekend of work goofed me up, although I did finally clean up the kitchen, which is a good thing. Um, so this week's schedule, if you were watching, thank you everyone for watching. And I'm going to get to all those people very shortly. Um, so Monday, I'm going to put this up as soon as I can. It, it all depends on, on server stuff and processing times. So today is going to be Monday Night Raw review, which was, I think my mood kind of spoiled it, but. I'll, I'll get to the ins and outs of Raw in a little bit. Tomorrow's still going to be Tuesday Night Smackdown. Wednesday, I think I'm just going to chill out. Probably Thursday. Maybe Thursday evening I'll get out of my funk. Again, it wasn't immediate family. It was someone I knew and someone that I was kind of in a relationship with. Don't want to sound like a cold bastard, but I was—I think it's one of those things you're kind of almost waiting for that phone call for. Well, you know that phone call is going to come one day, and today was, I guess, it. Friday, however, going to pick up. With Friday, with a live stream of Friday Impacts, people seem to like that. And Saturday, depending on stuff, which I have very limited control over, I may or may not do an AEW live stream show. I've already determined after my experience with AEW here in Daytona Beach. I think the ticket... Oh, no, the ticket's not up on that wall. But what is up on that wall? Oh, there's an EEW sign up there, though. I think it's right. I think it's this taller one. Right here above my... Right there, that's the little AEW thing. Right there. Um, so, depending... On stuff. Should I do that too? I think I should get that. I'll I'll figure that out. No, that's too. I don't know. I'll I'll figure something out. I still have a whole week for that. But um, so I might be. I may or may not be doing AEW. I might be doing a review show though. Probably Sunday. I want to get that posted before Extreme Rules, 
again, depending on how, how things go in, in, in the thing, we'll, I'll see. Uh, Monday's Raw, Tuesday SmackDown, the following week. Monday Raw, Tuesday SmackDown, Thursday Impact. And then that Sunday, I might actually go see a live show. So I'll, so if I do go see that live show, I'll definitely make a video for you guys. Like I've done in the past with NXT. And then I think it's just kind of normal stuff. Until Triple Mania. Maybe Triple Mania will, will join me up. Watch all the technical difficulties they have. But let's talk about some other technicalities. I would like to thoroughly thank all those in the YouTube universe. Wait for it. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Thank you guys so much. Um, I had a thoroughly enjoyable time when I did my RR and R show. I did have to change the title. Again, that day was a weird day because it was a day I was working, but not necessarily supposed to work. So you guys saw a little bit of the inner workings of the Hobo Studio. And for all those that put up with me, I think all 314 views, which is pretty darn amazing. Which is pretty cool. And again, it's not based on what I do, because heaven knows I'm a hobo Tom, and I do things very hobo style. And I'll get to that, because some Dr. Tom did not make very good predictions. Stupid Mark says he's a doctor. What's wrong with him? But... Then, uh, then again, he also had to miss that Friday show, so I don't know who would have stood tall and see if the math stands. But let's see here. So the first part of the show is going to be fairly long-winded. I have a whole bunch of stuff to go through. Oh, um, I'll get to this now. Dr. Tom, he only got two. Yeah, he only got two out of eight matches right. That's terrible. You know what that means? You know what? And just because I'm feeling miserable, Dr. Tom is disinterested Mark? A disinterested fan? With that being said, time for my round of shoutouts. And to do this, I actually need to pull up my list of video dedications because, again, if you ever leave a comment or let me know you subscribed, you get a little video dedication on either my Monday or Tuesday show. Again, it all kind of depends how many I have. I think one day I really had to do a whole bunch of them. Let's see. Let's, let's just let, let me see this so I can super screen stuff and actually multitask. Let's see here. I do look distracted. That's kind of okay. So the clan two ninety three. Thank you. This six count goes out to you.
Mike Bradbury. Yes. You get the dirty pin of the night. Rich Martinez, you are part of, oh, that's why, Mundo Madness. Slicks. I don't know if you ever got this, but you're my taxi partner. Brand 22, this air guitar goes out to you. Ooh, I'm gonna give him this one. Hmm. Isaac A Top. This holy sit moment is a dedication just for you. Jake Rehalt, you are a member of the El Generico Band. Kyle Warfield, 
Are you sure you're not that luchador on a forklift? Broken system! This Jordan got back goes out to you. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And last but not least, oh wow, I got lucky. This OMFG moment, Bobby means, goes out to you. And with that, now that I know how this is set up, I actually forgot how I set this up. That completes all my list of shoutouts. If I oh wait no I have one more shoot Let's see here let me scan my list you know what Duke Togo this lesson in Chinese kung fu as done by Zia Li goes out to you. So let's get that down there. I can't believe I almost forgot that. That's why I double check my list. Again, I've had a eh day. Start off really good, then then bad news hits and just like. But for all you fans that watch, I do I do do this for you, and they say it's having a distraction. It is good. To, it gets your mind on to normal everyday things. It, it's, it's cold and callous to say, but unfortunately life does go on. 
again, it was one of those things where you're semi waiting for that phone call. I, I feel I felt miserable and confused and shocked. I think it settled in. Because uh, what are the stages of grief? I don't think I had anger. So I, I think I I think I was unfortunately prepared. Um, I think I just started to think of things, and then planning things for for her family and stuff. And I'm not a man of extraordinary means by any stretch of the imagination, but at least I can show her kind of. Some of the memories that, that we had. Because she actually did show up here on the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. She helped me do predictions for Money in the Bank. Or was it? I think it was Money in the Bank. I'll have to take a look. But but she did. She was actually on here, here in the Hobo Studios. Again, ladies, if you'd like to be the next girlfriend and have your picture and become YouTube famous. All I have to do is say, oh, the Hobo Tom. Again, this is the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. And maybe in my second year of doing this, I'll give explanations to stuff and show you a little bit more of the insight of what goes at, what happens here at the Hobo Studios. Because what happens here in the Hobo Studios. No. It's posted on YouTube. Or it, well, it should be what happens to the Hobo Studios stays in the Hobo Studios. But when that camera's rolling, and there we go, I always forget. So when that camera's rolling, well, yeah, whatever. Somewhere here. I get stuck on YouTube then. And some things are good, some things are bad. So it's definitely not as bad as. <laughs> Listen, I still have good production value. It's by no means the AAA laughability. But again, if you saw AAA last year, that was funny as anything. So let me get to the wrestling show proper. So tonight, here on Monday Night Raw, it starts off. Um, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch come out. They have a match. This, is not, this one is an advertised match. It was um, Selena Vega... And Andrade C. and Almas versus Seth, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch in an elimination mixed. How do they put that? In an elimination mixed tag team match. I think that's how they say it. And I think Impact's going to be the new. Competitor with WWE, mainly because WWE said yes, we, we highlight our women wrestling, but I think this was the first time, at least on Impact, that we had a true intergender res wrestling match be the main event. I know they did intergender wrestling. I don't think. It was the main event during the in Chikara. So I know it was Matt Wrestling and Darkness Crabtree versus Sarah Del Rey and some other woman. Again, that that whole match, that whole match made me laugh. Again, one of those fun moments in, in pro wrestling. And again, pro wrestling does. If, if as long as you're not that pro wrestling fan, pro wrestling fans are actually pretty cool. Again, I have to talk with a whole bunch of them. Um, I listed all of them. They all got their little shout out. I think. Let's see. Except I can't I forget what was that. Oh, air guitar. That's right. Yeah. Can't read my own handwriting some days. But so it starts off uh, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins versus Lena Vega and Andrade Cena Almas. This whole idea that Seth. And Becky, a couple of WWEs, kind of getting old. I mean, it's not, it, it, it's original, 
but they almost have it scripted for them. So it's not organic. It really seems forced. So, but for the most part, Andrade, I mean, he's so good. The thing is, I don't think Seth is actually used to carrying this this fast pace of match. I don't think he's done that really since his days in Florida Championship Wrestling and the very beginnings of NXT. Because Jeremy has a very, not slow match, but very methodical match. Uh, eventually, Zelina, uh, I think Seth tags in Becky. Actually, Andrade, I think Andrade tagged in um, Zelina Vega. And then Seth tagged in Becky. So then the two women wrestled for like a little bit. It was really short. I just noticed Lena Vega was on me when she got stuck in this armor relatively quick. So with that, we have to go to a commercial break. But I don't have commercial break. If you'd like to be a sponsor, you can always leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Again, if you've sent me free t-shirts, I will plug your, your t-shirt Unless it says something really bad or horrible or something terrible, or as I might do something else to it. Again, like right up there, I have the Southern Pro Lucha Libre. One day coming to the Greater Daytona area. I always like to plug them. And so the match restarts because I guess that was my commercial. <laughs> uh, so now it's just really a one on one. With Andrade Cienalmas and Seth Rollins, and that was that was fun though. The two can put on a really good match. Andrade is still amazing. He carries a much faster pace, and it didn't seem Seth wanted to work that faster pace, and he didn't really seem that comfortable working that fast pace. Overall, it was fun though. Um, oh, and Seth effed up because Becky Lynch ate. Like a suicide dive. I think it was Selena Vega did it. Because Selena Vega. With Seth Rollins, it's a lot more believable. Only because he's smaller. But whoever it was last week, it's still hard to imagine how an 85 pound woman can really hit a hurricanrana. On like a 300 pound guy. Oh yeah, the, the spot that happened. Um, Seth caught Zelina Vega in the Hurricanrana, let her hang a little bit. So Becky gave her the basement drop kick. It was good. Uh, but then again, uh, Becky put herself in harm's way. Ate a move from Andrade C and Almas. And I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, obviously Seth hit. Then they got upset. Hit the stomp on Andrade Cienalmas, and it was it was a it was actually a really really good enjoyable match. This was a cheeseburger match. And of course, Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans was was there. They stand tall, so I think, I don't know, maybe I'll give Dr. Tom a chance to redeem himself later this week, but we'll see what happens. Um, the Corbin Evans relationship, it's, it's, it's a business relationship. It's, ah. Then Paul Heyman comes out. He is still the advocate. And of course, he has to hype up Extreme Rules because it is going into Philadelphia, the city of brotherly hate. And the place where those dirty, drunk, disgusting, filthy Philly fans are. Still don't understand how you boo Santa Claus. All I want to hear in that arena, tase him. Tase him. Boo Philly fan. Hate dirty, disgusting, dirty bird, drunk, filthy. Five cent poor Philly fan. Oh, I didn't say that last part. Something slipped. 
But um, again, that gives you my opinion about the fans in Philadelphia. Uh, so Paul Heyman, again, he, he's hyping up, uh, brings up the fact that ECW did come from Philadelphia. They were the first extreme championship wrestling. Again, it comes in Philadelphia from the from the infamous Bingo Hall. So, it's, so extreme rules make sense to be in Philadelphia. We'll see, because again, the Philly crowd, if the matches are bad, the Philly crowd will let you know. Here in Florida, we'll just bust out beach balls. And we'll have beach ball mania. It's always fun. And then you have a uh, six man, six to two out of three falls. Six man tag match between the Miz and the Usos versus the Revival and Elias. And actually, it was pretty good. The early goings on the Revival and Usos, they're so good at tag team wrestling. Very classic work, tag team isolation, double teams. Um, the heels with the Revival are so good at, at getting the ref distracted so they can have that extra couple seconds to beat on the guy instead of just a normal five seconds. They're just good at, really good at what they do. It's so hard to have any complaints about that. And then Elias like just was getting beat up. Again, he provides a good heel distraction. Uh, eventually, they do hit the Shatter Machine. Uh, the Revival hit the Machine on an Uso. I forget which one. And Elias just seemed to like walk out. Like, what? You're up one nothing. I'd stay there. So then, of course, when Elias walks out, Jay Uso gets the hot tag. And I love the one phrase. I think Dash Wilder used. Dash, yeah, I, I guess so. I was, I was, I, I just know that the revival. I think Scott Dawson's a bald head guy. So it's Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. Dash and Dawson. Wilder and Dawson. I forget. But um He's like, not today, Uso. Hit a brain buster. I'm fans of the brain buster. That's still good. Miz then gets the hot tag. Hits the skull crushing finale. And then really quick, the Usos just double team the revival. Uh the one I think Jimmy Uso hit the splash, and the the Miz and Uso's win. It was really quick. It's still really fun though when you put when you have two true tag team technicians, such as the Usos and the Revival. You know it's going to be a good match. You throw in Elias on one side. Yeah, he has his weird heel stuff. You throw in the Miz, who's like super babyface now. You're going to have yourself a good cheeseburger match. You have Drake Maverick and his wife, Ray Michelle. Oops. Ray Michelle. If Drake's more interested in that 24 7 title, there's always and only Ho Ho Tom. Because if I ever had a girlfriend with those legs and wearing that dress, we're not at wrestling. We're over there. Consummating our love for each other for a long time with Gatorade bottles at hand. And that's an old Mary with children reference. That was still funny, though. Um, so it was that. Uh, Rey Mysterio comes out, hits a promo. It's a Rey Mysterio open challenge. He has no belt. So, of course, Bobby Lashley came out. And wow, this is the beginning of squash match galore, folks. Because not only did you have this squash match, because Rey Mysterio is way too small. He tried to hit the 6. He did hit the 619. He went for the splash. Lashley just caught him, tossed him around, hit the spear. That was the end of Rey. Then he teased about throwing Ray through the screen. But I think, unfortunately, 
that the WWE spent their whole fireworks budget last show. There you go. Well, that was fun. It was, it was, it was different. It was unexpected. It gave a little tease to what happened without having like they had only had to have the one obvious recap. This was a ham sandwich. Then we had Cesaro versus. No way. Jose. No way. Jose. And this was a squash match because Cesaro is way too strong, way too much of a ring technician. No way Jose is good. He's not that good, though. Uh, he got him to the swing, put him right into the sharpshooter, he tapped. This was a squash match. It really didn't do much for Cesaro, and it definitely didn't help No Way Jose. So therefore, this match is actually a can of soup. Then the Streets Prophets show up again. That was pretty good. Um, they had a Canals update. Obviously, Maria is pregnant because she's craving pickles and ice cream. Now, again, oh, the oh, you brought her flowers. That's pretty cool. Then there was a Nikki and Bailey promo. Blah blah blah. Our truth is not looking for Drake because he wants his for seven his baby back. He has to feed a belt. I don't know. That's our truth in his own world. Then you had the Viking Raiders. So actually, there was a lot of wrestling. The Viking Raiders versus the Justin brothers. Colin and Drew Justin. I don't know. Local enhancement talent. Squash. Both guys got involved. They did that pop-up power slam, which is pretty good. Uh, I think... Hanson had the one guy pin pulled him up and he said, Not yet. Not done hurting him some more. So that was, that was cool. That's the kind of heel, arrogant heel, I know your job or I'm going to just beat you up some more things. So that was kind of fun. Har again, it harkens back to the old rock and wrestling 80s days when heels used to do that a lot more frequently. People go, Boo! So, so, so that they're getting their heel. Although people say, Yeah, beat him up some more. Well, bloodthirsty crowds here. Uh, so, the, so they won in a match like it was ever in question. Viking Raiders obviously go over. And the fun thing about this is that Drake Maverick, because not everyone's chasing Drake Maverick. So Drake Maverick's running around, uh, runs through the ring right between the Viking Raiders. The loser locker room, like horse with blinders, like just starts to run in. And go after, and of course they interrupt the Viking Raiders and get beat up by the Viking Raiders. So therefore, overall, this was a good ham sandwich. Wow, I'm going to be getting to the gym a little bit late. That's okay. Then we had, Rick then we had Ricochet versus Luke Gallows. Um, they say... Oh, they did bring up the old go beat up John Cena. We're going to beat up John Cena thing. Again, heel AJ still good AJ. It was a clash of styles for a little bit. This was a really short match, and Luke Gallows can do so much more. Uh, Ricochet hit him with a roll up. AJ's like super hyped. They're just burying the club every time they do this, making Ricochet look least, but it's a can of soup. I mean, even I could do that basic wrestling punch, run the rope part, take bump part. I can get rolled up. Not that hard. And of course, AJ goes on, uh, you said you could take on all three of us? Well, well here's the second guy you're going to take on. That happened next. It was, um, a of course, after the commercial. So it was Ricochet versus Carl Anderson. And Ricochet showing the effects of getting beat up. So this match is a little bit better. 
Carl Anderson, I think, again, had a really basic wrestling match. A lot of European uppercuts, um, kicks. The, the machine gunner has been reduced to a pellet gun, which is not good. Again, that's how Ricochet takes on everyone. He hit the 630 splash onto Carl Anderson. Again, they're just... I'll even show you what I drew. They're just bearing the Bullet Club more. Let's see that. That is a unsmiley face. That's terrible. Uh, AJ did get involved and gave him the phenomenal farm. He's probably, I hope he yells at the club. Again, they're really burying the Bullet Club. This is another can of soup. Then there was oh an evolve promo. And then Shane and Drew they they find they're, they're looking they've been kind of the whole story is they've been looking for a partner for Roman. Then we have a beat the clock challenge. I haven't seen a beat the clock challenge match in a while. The first was Bailey to take on Sarah Logan, and Bailey's pretty good. She did hit that that springboard splash, which I do like. Goes from the top rope, the, the, jumps onto the second rope in the corner to the to the second true second rope. Does the splash? So that's fun. That pop up headbutt looked nasty though. I don't know how well they timed that, but that's amazing. That's still amazing looking. <laughs> My question to you folks out there: Which Sarah Logan do you like better? Do you like Viking Sarah Logan or crazy backwater Sarah Logan? So you can just kind of leave a comment, whatever. I'll figure out how to do polls one day. Uh, she kicked out after one count too. There's, there's not two counts. She's like, I'm not falling to that. Uh, again, Logan, she was there to win, and this is actually a fairly long challenge. Uh, eventually, I think Bailey did roll her up. Uh, yeah, I think, did she hit the Bailey to belly? No. Oh, she hit the elbow drop. And that kind of finished off Sarah Logan. It was good. It, it wasn't bad. It was, it was a ham sandwich. And then for the next, the second part of the Beat the Clock Challenge, is you need two people. It was Nikki Cross's turn. And Nikki Cross drew Dana Brooke. And it was pretty good. Um, Dana Brooke, she still looks, she still looks amazing. <laughs> Nikki Cross looks, she's just tiny, but she's why She looks a lot more muscular. Again, she just like likes to beat up. Poor Dana Brooke. I mean, Although Dana Brooke, to be honest, did try to kill herself when she tried to swanton bomb, and Nikki rolled out of the way, whether that was planned or not. That, that was smart. Uh, eventually, Nikki won the challenge when she hit the her swing neck breaker, almost like the shake rattle and roll. And is Bailey really turning heel? Because Nikki gets to mention the stipulation. It's going to be a two-on-one handicap match for the Raw Women's title. And and Bailey, I don't know. I, I've never... Nikki Cross did mention that she, Bailey has no friends. Oh, and this match, eh, it was a ham sandwich. Bailey's turning heel, and Bailey doesn't have any friends because remember, Sasha Banks' only friend kind of left. And actually, according to news reports, uh, I think it was Fightful Wrestling, Wrestle Talk, What Culture. So there's my three sources. So I've actually done, some, oh wow, journalism. But <laughs> that's, that's a horrible idea. It's a confounding thought. Um, Sasha Banks was taking pictures with those people and, and then 
know of pro wrestling that are off in Japan, it's not something you really want to do, Sasha Banks, mainly because, one, it's not like you were Seth Rollins going back to your Elks Lodge bingo hall place where you first wrestled. This is an entirely separate company. Not where you began training. This is different company. Company people might not like that. Um, yeah, I was just waiting for Sasha Banks to show up. I think she's... It's not like some poster. Because again, those three sources I mentioned, what culture, um, something to wrestle with, I think Inside the Ropes, they saw like posters of Sasha Banks for SummerSlam. That has to happen soon because SummerSlam's actually, I want to say it's right after Triple Mania almost. Where's that thing? Yeah, I want to say SummerSlam is the 11th. So that's only four weeks away. So we could ask for Triple Mania. So we'll see what happens there. Um, then it was a Seth and Becky promo, and I'm just like, oh, this is dull. Um, oh, she called Corey Graves emo head. I don't know what that means. I think, I think he just like shaved his head. I think. We got. I know he got a haircut last night. Then the Street Profits come back, and now they're just playing hype, man. You know what? They're on TV. The WWE is probably doing the right thing in getting them prepped to say, okay, this is what happens when you get to the big leagues. So that way we don't bring you up, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa. So here's your little taste of the big leagues. Then it was Drew McIntyre versus Shane McMahon and versus Roman Reigns and Gary? Who Gary kind of shrunk a little bit and got a little more in shape looking. So the guy came out in a full body suit wearing a mask. Granted, wearing the mask was Shane's idea. So we'll have to see. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. So this is the go home show. So it was okay. They, they beat up Roman, isolated Gary. Gary, however, knows some wrestling moves. He can actually do flippy, flippy stuff. Sign him. Sign him. Uh, it's like, what happened? Whoa. I'm like, which luchador did they get to do this? And then all of a sudden, um, Drew did hit the Claymore. And Shane had a really confused look. He's like, Gary can do flips and slingshots? Whoa, he's not supposed to hit me. It was Cedric Alexander on the mask. And even though Drew and Shane actually wound up losing, or I'm sorry, they actually won. They did pin Gary again. The Claymore kick trumps everything. This was actually different. I do like the fact that they had the twist in. It was just really short because they had the introductions, I want to say, at 10.50. Went to commercial. I don't think it was a, a six-minute match. Maybe six plus, but I just remember five. Yeah, no, wait a second. It had to be like a four minute match because then, then, of course, he had, they had to do the whole unmasking part. For a main event, this, this was a ham. This, this was a ham. It was a ham sandwich. And overall, that was raw. Um, nowhere near the quality. That they put on last week. Not bad. But after watching Impact Slammiversary. Impact Slammiversary was actually one of the better pay-per-views. Even taking a look at some of the stuff. Because Stomping Ground, was, Stomping Ground I, I will say, was, was a very pleasant surprise. But for Impact to do what they did. They put on a really good show, a lot more entertaining. Yeah, I, I heard some of the criticisms, and I can see the point of view. They had three of the same finishes, like 
like all in a, almost in a row. But still, it was so. Even the way they did the three same finishes, it was still way more creative than the WWE would, would have done it. So WWE, they have. They're gonna have some interesting shows ahead of them. And again, I don't think Impact's gonna be. Impact's still not the WWE's main competitor. Impact and AEW, that'll be an interesting Wednesday. Well, when's Friday? Impact and AEW are, are more so on a level playing field. New Japan's really... WWE's up here. They're, 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 they're the biggest guy in the room. New Japan's there, but they're overseas, and they don't do things as frequently. AEW and Impact are about the same level. Then you have Ring of Honor, and then Chikara beneath them, and then, and then you go to the True Indies. Then you have ML, uh, Major League Wrestling. It'll be interesting to see. The pro wrestling scene's getting really interesting. You have a lot more Somewhat larger indie promotions. You still have PWG, Bar Wrestling, Chikara still out, out there. Then you have the true local scene. So you have like the local scene being like like true AAA. I still want to say like Chikara. MLW. Well, well, actually, like the Indies would be like Summer League, Chikara, MLW would be Single A, Summer League, Ring of Honors, two Single A. Double A would be like Impact and AEW. Triple A would be... Probably, would probably be Triple A, uh, CML, uh, CMLL, and New Japan, and then the big leagues would be the WWE, and, and you and you can shift a couple things around, like New Japan, and I think the one thing that just kills New Japan is that their matches aren't so early in the morning. It's really hard to see, especially after especially after work the next day. So it's it'll be interesting to see how things go. Um, again, I'll let every, I'll keep everyone notified as to what's going to happen this week. Again, it's kind of up in the air. It's, it's that, I don't know, weird, weird, weird week to start off. I'm expecting some, one text message. I get one phone call. And it was a text message. When I said everything was okay, it's like, no. So it wasn't the text that I would have wanted. But... Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And again, if you too would like your video dedication, you can do a couple things. You can either think liking doesn't show me your name, but I do, th I do thank you and I do appreciate those likes. Uh, if you send a comment, you definitely get a video dedication on my next kind of review show because I still have to figure out how to do things live. But I might do that maybe for like commercials and stuff. Ooh, I could do that. During promos and video dedications. I also so much stuff to figure out. And uh, so you can comment, or I definitely will get it. Subscribe as long as you're public, you get one, because this way I can actually see who to send that dedication out to. And definitely if you email. And I'll put all that information up at subboingirlfriend at gmail.com and a whole bunch of other stuff. And thank you, everyone. It was a much needed distraction, and I do like doing this for you. My loyal YouTube audience? I thought I'd never be saying those words. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye.